on uh, development, developments around the flooding in uh, Bornu State and the aftermath of the flood disaster which claimed thousands of homes, business, places and hospitals in Maiduguri, uh, the Bornu State capital. Now over 200,000 people who are victims of the devastation are currently taking refuge at Bakasi Camp in Maiduguri. The Bornu State government has since commenced provision of food and other basic needs uh, for the victims to alleviate their suffering. Now, this morning, the governor, Babagana Zulum, visited the camp to sort out the number of households sheltered at the camp for enhanced intervention. TVC News senior reporter Jesse Tafida is uh, standing by to give us an update Hello, on Harry. the situation this morning. Jesse, uh, good morning. And we can see from behind you there that um, a, a number of persons, you are obviously at the IDP camp where the governor is ensuring that these people are properly, properly taken care of as it is. But first, let's get a feeler about the visit of the vice president to the people. We saw him wading in the water yesterday. How do the people feel about this, knowing that the vice president came to see the situation of things by himself? Thank you very much, Veronica. Um, the situation yesterday was traumatic for the people of Maiduguri because uh, almost half of the state capital was washed away by the waters. And um, a lot of people, uh, victims of this flooding, uh, women and children at the most vulnerable. Even as you can see behind me, most of these people are women and children. It took them time to go through the waters. Some, uh, there are times that they had to bring uh, those that knew how to swim very well to dive into the waters to bring out children. It was really traumatic for the people. And the vice president's visit yesterday was a beacon of hope to them, according to what they are saying. Because seeing him going through waters, it means he's, he's coming here to show them that he is together with them. And for the fact that he's uh, uh, the son of the soil, they are so much happy to see him. And according to them, which we interviewed, they said they, they, they feel some sigh of relief. They have a sigh of relief seeing the vice president coming the day that the flooding happened. And he put himself in, in himself in their shoes. It's something to, to show them that he's together with them. Now we went round with the with the vice president yesterday from 4 p.m. till 7 p.m. The vice president was in Nigeria. He went around the, the metropolis. Some places we cannot go that we can, that we couldn't go uh, around four o'clock in the in the evening. We were able to go by seven p.m. It shows that the waters are receding and they are reducing uh, drastically. Now this morning, the Borno State Governor is here together with the pressmen, together with his uh, executive council, together with the national and the state emergency management agency, the North East Development Commission, to you know sort out. Head of heads of hardcore because yesterday they couldn't do that because of how massive uh, the flood was. They are trying to uh, rescue those that were that were drowned, and then the, the sorting began began this morning. And um, uh, according to NEMA, over two hundred thousand people are taking refuge here. This is Bakas IDP camp. It could be recalled that this camp was closed down about two years ago, where uh, displaced persons from five different local governments uh, took refuge here for about eight years because they were displaced as a result of Boko Haram insurgency. Now the camp was reopened by the governor yesterday, not only Bakasi camp, but there are other four camps across the state that were opened to give shelter to these people. Now, as you can see, the women are agreeing and they receive 10,000 naira each this morning for them to just get something to eat. The men are here. You can see them. They're waiting for their own uh, share. And the governor himself is the one conducting the distribution exercise of our money. And we could see trucks here, trucks of food, uh, water to give these people. Now, these people spent the night here. Uh, and you could see from their faces, uh, they're not so much uh, happy spending the night here, but they had to because their houses were washed away. Right. And then I was driving to uh, to the government house this morning. It's good to note that a lot of places the waters are 
reduced drastically and people right. have started go, go, uh, going Jesse, to their house. They have access to their house this morning. Right. Jesse, quickly give us a, a, a picture, paint us a picture of what the state of the camp is like because you, like you rightly pointed, the camp was shut down about two years ago and one can only wonder what the state of things are for the people who have to move in there right now. Do they have portable water? Uh, what's the state of the sanitary situation there? Basically, you talked about the number of women there, and we could see them right behind you. How are they being distributed to all of these um, places within the IDP camp? Now, now because the IDP camp uh, has uh, over uh, 5,000 houses, you could see the houses behind me. Now, these houses were built by the state government for uh, state government workers, but uh, they were not allocated because of the insurgent. Yeah, that, uh, that was why IGPs were hosted in this camp. But as they left the camp, the houses have been re currently renovated because the state government wants to uh, allocate the houses to uh, uh, civil servants. But when the, these people came in yesterday, we could see uh, the state emergency management agency and some development partners putting in wash facilities. And now this, as a, just for example, this is a truck of water we have. We have like uh, 10 of them this morning coming in. Yesterday, there were seven. It's to tell you that um, uh, water, wash facilities, and other basic items are here. Because when the vice president came yesterday, he even assured them that uh, a lot of things will be coming their way to give them immediate relief. And at around 9 p.m. yesterday, before we left this camp, we could see that food items like like um, rice, um, uh, bread, and, and some of the food items were brought in. Uh, just to show you, just now, this car is arriving, and this car is having some items. Let me just try and turn my camera so that you would see what I'm talking about. Now, this is a truck load of bread. Now, we have a lot of them here, eh? and they are here to uh, distribute it to the people living here. Mm. Now, I just want to, just let me run, and then you could see, this is, you could see this Baba has been near Baba in Afrana. He has Zamanka and then Jia. He has Gidanka. Luaiki. Matanka now. Yaranka now. He said he has five children, and then uh, he's been here together with his wife and children. They all stay, but his house has been all washed right. away by the floods. And he spent tonight here. You could see his face. Right. Quickly before we let you go, Jesse, because you of could our see time. His face. You could see. Okay. Right, right. I, I just want to know what the security situation is in the camp. How secured is it for these persons? A huge number of persons there, and you would recall also that uh, because of security situation around that area, it was shut down. So quickly tell us how secured the camp is for these people. Now, the camp is very secured because it's, as, as it is at the heart of it. It's at the Road. Road. Uh, security operatives are here together with them. Uh, um, just to show, not just to be seen, we could see security operatives here giving them cover. They've been here throughout the night, uh, and also this morning, uh, we have a joint operation. We could see the Nigerian police, the Nigerian security and civil defense corps, the civilian JTF, they are all here trying to secure the people. But generally, the place is already secured. Maybe the Bonosi capital, as we know, is peaceful. So these people, talking about security, they are all safe. Right. Senior reporter Jesse Tafida, thank you so much for bringing us up to speed with developments. We'll definitely keep tabs with you on developments coming out of Boranu State, but ensure that you are safe.